This is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue and insomnia. Now there's a lot of reasons that we can have insomnia. One of the things I want you to think about when you have an adrenal fatigue problem is it's not always going to be a simple answer. Typically there's going to be a lot of mechanics or a lot of reasons or biochemical things that are going on that are going to result in insomnia. And this is just but one of them. Other things could be neurotransmitter problems, um, obviously inflammation and infections, um, too much hormones running through the body, liver congestion, uh, adrenal problems. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about adrenal problems and how it relates to your insomnia and why you can't fall asleep, why you can't stay asleep, and why you're just not getting good quality sleep. Today I wanted to talk to you about the difference between cortisone and cortisol. And, and really cortisone is the inactive form of cortisol. And cortisol is obviously the active form. So what is cortisone or what is cortisol? Cortisol basically is our stress hormone. So when we're stressed out and we have inflammation and we have a drop of blood sugar and our minerals are off, then typically our body senses that as a stressing, a stress response and the adrenal glands will secrete cortisol to get your blood sugar normalized, to help um, regulate your minerals and to help reduce inflammation. The way I explain cortisol is kind of like the clutch of a standard vehicle. It helps you shift gears. It helps you shift from up to down and from down to up. So suffice to say, cortisol, cortisone is the inactive form of that. So it actually doesn't work. So if we have too much cortisol, our body normally what it will do as a, as a mechanism to help compensate, it has this enzyme called 11-beta-HSD. And what that does is it can convert cortisol to cortisone when necessary. So if we have a lot of stress, we have too much cortisol going through the body, then we're going to try to break it down through the liver breakdown process. But enzymes are also going to try to speed up their activity in order to make it less um, catabolic because that's what cortisol is. It's a catabolic tish, uh, hormone. It breaks things down. If you feel worn out and fatigued and not regenerative, potentially your cortisol being too high is causing breakdown. So how does this relate to insomnia? Well, typically when we have an upregulation of 11-beta-HSD, what that means is that there's too much cortisol compared to cortisone, then that's going to impact our sleep, our ability to stay asleep, our ability to fall asleep, our ability to be rested. And so what I'll do is I'll do a Dutch test on someone which looks at their 11-beta-HSD activity. It's just one of the things that the Dutch test does. And I can see if they're, um, if they're upregulated or not. And if they are, then typically we can do things besides just the stress response and figuring out is there an infection, is there inflammation, is there an injury, is there psychosocial stressors. I mean, those are the big things that we need to work on to, to lower cortisol. But we can do some nutrients to help um, upregulate 11-beta HSD activity to make more cortisone, to make it more inactive so that we can get through the night and sleep. Um, things that cause cortisone to be upregulated versus cortisol is hyperthyroidism, um, quality sleep, obviously. Um, but here's some three great products. You can do Magnolia, Skullcap, Zisphus, and even a fourth one called Citrus Peel Extract. So again, Magnolia, Skullcap, Zisphus, and Citrus Peel Extract. What that will do is that will upregulate 11-beta-HSD, and that will cause this dial to come over to here and have more cortisone. On the contrary, things that cause 11-beta-HSD activity to be higher and make more cortisol, hypothyroidism, licorice root. How many of you are taking licorice root and can't sleep? Central obesity, so having insulin resistance. This is where we talked about having more meals more frequently. That's going to cause your insulin levels to spike, and that's going to cause a releasing of cortisol. So you're seeing how we start to put all of these um, information together and increase sodium. So hopefully you found this video informative. Hopefully you're scratching your head and thinking, oh, i got to watch this again because he kind of raced right through it. Um, do that. And make sure you give me a comment because I'm always here to answer your questions. 
Make sure you give me a share. Make sure you like my Facebook page and also my YouTube page. And then also check me out on Facebook, Adrenal Fatigue Recovery. And then I also have a blog called Adrenal Fatigue Society. So hopefully, let's just summarize. Um, we have adrenal fatigue and insomnia. We can have upregulation of your 11 beta HSD because of hypothyroidism or because of insulin resistance or inflammation. And we can try to downregulate it through magnolia, skullcop, and zisphus. But just don't think that just because you're taking those and it's helping your sleep, which it can, you would do it a half hour before you go to bed, that that's going to fix the stress response. That's going to fix your virus or that's going to fix your stressful job or that's going to fix your um, your injury. Those are, those are the bigger things that you really need to focus on. So anyways, hope you got a lot of information. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja and I look forward to helping you with your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you.